Hey everyone, it's Blake. Welcome in to episode number 69 of our WWE 2021 save in TW20. This is Raw for December week one. And yes, I know it was several week break again here on the series. Uh, but uh, as you all know by now, uh, work can be kind of uh, up and down. So uh, yeah, just uh, been busy a couple weeks, but uh, back at it here with episode number 69 of our series. And uh, it is Raw for December week one. We've got a lot to get to uh, in this episode, but as we know, also a lot to get to on the horizon here uh, when we look at kind of the upcoming schedule because we've got the May Young Classic coming up in two weeks. Um, that's going to be December week two, so basically not not even two weeks now. Um, you know, we've got four shows, this counting this one up until the May Young Classic, a two-night event week two, December, and then we've got Armageddon, which will be a raw branded pay-per-view uh, at the end of the month. So a very busy month, easily our big, busiest month thus far. Um, if we go from Survivor Series all the way to Armageddon, uh, pretty much four big shows when you count in the two-night May Young Classic. So a lot to get to, and for all, a lot to kind of progress towards uh, the pay-per-view at Armageddon. So let's jump right in. And we start with the pre-show. Uh, Angelo Dawkins gets the win over Riddick Moss, 52 overall. Um, just a way to get Dawkins involved because, as we know, his tag team partner, uh, has had a lot going on, and as you'll see, um, he will have a lot going on on this show as well. So um, that is uh, just, you know, just a way to get Dawkins a win here, and that's what we do. Speaking of his tag team partner, we start off raw with a big announcement from Commissioner Stone Cold Steve Austin, our general manager for Raw. And Steve Austin struggles going off script. Have we ever gotten that before? I don't think we have. Uh, 79 overall here. Austin sitting in his uh, nice fancy office, which we know is probably not a nice fancy office. It's Stone Cold's office. There's uh, Steve Weiser's everywhere, but he makes it official. Austin sitting at his desk says that based on the events of the 10-man tag at Survivor Series, which saw Montez Ford pin WWE champion Edge to win the match, Austin is officially announcing that next week in the main event of Raw, it will be Edge defending the WWE Championship against Montez Ford. So there's a big match <laughs> set for next week. Um, and uh, Austin also adds that there will be no interference in this match. He says anyone that attempts to interfere will be fired and they will be um, getting a nice can of whoop ass from Stone Cold Steve Austin. So Austin sort of setting the table here next week, Edge versus Ford, WWE Championship, no interference uh, or else basically uh, for that. So there's your match. I know a lot of people sort of predicted coming off of Survivor Series that uh, Ford getting the pin on Edge to win that match. And we'll talk about what happened in that finish a little bit later on. Uh, but it's now set. Ford is going to get his WWE Championship match and he's going to get it next week on Raw. So stage set for that one, 79 overall. More to come uh, on this. And we start things off match-wise with Sonya Deville in a terrible match, uh, getting a win over Mandy Rose, 659, gets a 40. Clearly uh, no uh, clicking whatsoever in this one. Uh, as you can see, Mandy Rose hinting at some subtle mannerisms. Potential future heel turn for her, we'll see. But uh, these two, you know, in reality, were, what, partners for a, a long time and clearly have no chemistry as singles competitors. So uh, that is not ideal. Curls the ground down a little bit. But, um, hey, we take our chances. DeVille, of course, one half of the tag team champions. So she's able to, to fight on both shows, and uh, she will get Kyrie Zane in the first round of the Megan Classic. So this was just giving Sonya a win over Mandy Rose, who is not in the tournament. Speaking of Sonya DeVille, she's not finished. But before we get there, it is Becky Lynch. A great segment here, 87. Becky, uh, backstage, cutting a promo, and she says that uh, her first-round opponent, Asuka, she saw some signs at Survivor Series of the old Asuka. Of course, Asuka was not in the match with Becky Lynch. Uh, she was in another match, but as we remember, Asuka, you probably don't remember. I know it's been several weeks, guys. I'm sorry. Uh, but if you do remember, uh, Asuka was disqualified from that match, uh, which also involved Baszler and DeVille, that was the team of them uh, with the Iconics um, against uh, Asuka, Kairi Zane, uh, Liv Morgan, Tony Storm. Um, Asuka was disqualified for kind of holding on the Asuka lock, so kind of hinting at some of that aggression uh, that we've seen from the Asuka character in the past. And Becky says she saw some of that 
And so now she knows what she has to prepare for because this is the premier first round match, uh, Becky Lynch versus Asuka. She says she will be prepared for whichever Asuka shows up at the May Young Classic. So 87 here overall, but just as Becky is finishing speaking, here comes Sonya Deville and Shayna Baszler. Right after Deville's match, she's coming backstage, and they confront Becky Lynch, saying that she can talk all she wants about beating Asuka, but that all they've heard is about all this teasing of Becky Lynch versus Sasha Banks, um, this big match in the May Young Classic Finals, but Deville reminds her that to get to the finals, Becky has to go through her, and that's a potential semifinal matchup. Baszler uh, notes that she'll already be there, and it's just a matter of making sure Becky knows that her chances of getting there and going through both of them uh, is not going to happen for her to win the Mayon Classic. So, kind of setting the seed there. Uh, could that be something we see in this tournament? So we, you know, we've seen we've tried to do that. Uh, we try to tie in all these possible matches that you could see at some point, and we're kind of doing that here with this. Um, the bays are terrible uh, with the script. We didn't script this, so um, Sonya did okay, but uh, Shayna did not, which is it's fine. So 65, not great, but it is what it is. And then is the Lucha Brothers also cutting a, a backstage promo. They make it clear that they are officially done with their first goal in WWE, and that was to destroy the Mysterio name and legacy. Uh, of course, Penta beat Rey Mysterio at Survivor Series. They cost Rey Mysterio his WWE Championship match against Edge. Uh, we remember that going back. Uh, was, that, was that Unforgiven? Um, it's, all, it's all kind of running together now, but cage match when they made their debuts. But now they're done with the Mysterios, and now they're on to their next goal, which is to become the WWE Tag Team Champions. So, Lucha Brothers kind of calling their shot here, making it clear what they're out to do, and that leads us into our next segment, which is them getting the win over Drew Gulak and Akira Tozawa. 68, not bad, but, I mean, it is what it is, right? We're not exactly pushing Gulak and Tozawa, although we know Tozawa kind of gives us some good matches every now and then, but uh, Phoenix, tremendous in this match, 82 overall. Um, of course, the chemistry is always there between the Lucha Bros. 68. So the Lucha Bros on uh, have set their sights on the WWE Tag Team titles. And then, speaking of that match involving the Lucha Bros, uh, backstage is Dominic apologizing to Ray because you remember the finish. It was uh, Dominic, a little botched interference, allowed Penta uh, to finish off Ray in that one. And Dominic was just saying, hey, look, I was just trying to protect the Mysterio legacy, I was trying to do everything I could. And it just backfired on us. And uh, Dominic apologizing and Ray being the great dad that he is um, accepts the apology. And Ray says, it's fine. Uh, now it's just a matter of us having to work our way back to the top to protect the Mysterio legacy. So Ray, not happy, but making it clear that he's going to teach Dominic basically a lesson here of we've not got to work to get our spot back. So that's kind of Ray's message here. To Dominic. So 59 overall, a lot more to come, as you would expect, uh, with this particular story. And then, uh, speaking of the Mayon Classic, Tony Storm, Liv Morgan, uh, they're just cutting sort of your traditional promos here, getting ready for their first round matches. Storm will face off with Alexa Bliss. Of course, Morgan's going to face off with Raquel, Raquel Gonzalez. We've had sort of the back and forth between those four over the past several weeks. Um, and that is kind of your build up here with these two, just basically setting their sights, explaining why they uh, are going to, you know, come out of their respective brackets. And once again, teasing the possibility that we could have tag team partners here face off in the finals of the Bay Young Classic since they are both, you know, on different sides of the bracket. So we're just, again, teasing all of these different matches. And I know how, what I want to do is I just want to throw so many possibilities at you guys. That way um, you're thinking, it's not as predictable, and I've said that from the start. I don't want this tournament to be predictable, um, and that's why I'm, I'm adding in all of these teasers so that it kind of throws you off maybe of thinking 100% sure one way or the other that you know how this is going to turn out uh, because I think it's it's going to be a somewhat unpredictable tournament. I, I will say that. I think this is one that um, we're trying to put all these teasers in because I want to make sure that it's not predictable, um, but it is one that, again, I'm very excited about because <laughs> this is going to be a big event uh, for our series. So 57 overall here, not great, but uh, it's fine. And then it is uh, Chad Gable. Of course, Gable's coming off the loss to Kevin Owens at Survivor Series. Of course, you remember um, they had that outstanding match, which is no longer the match of the series, uh, which I think it was, what was it, an 87, I think? Those two did just on a random Raw. We just were blown away at the fact that that one just um, became our best match we've had in the series. And then 
course, Rock and Reigns, uh, Survivor Series eclipsed that. But um, still, you know, Gable loses to Owens twice. They lost the rematch in Survivor Series. And now he's questioning himself. He's not sure where he goes from here. But he does point out that somebody else was kind of in a similar position. AJ Styles, remember, Styles was kind of down on his luck. He lost that match to Owens, and then he sort of transformed himself uh, in bringing back the Bullet Club. Um, so Gable says maybe that's the path he has to follow. Maybe he just has to completely, um, you know, transform himself and reinvent himself now moving forward. He's going to try to do that starting tonight, going up against his former tag team partner, Shelton Benjamin. So uh, remember, Benjamin went to accept Owens' open challenge several weeks ago. That's when Gable attacked him, and um, that led to Gable getting the rematch against Owens. So we're going to have sort of uh, the feud continues here, but uh, it's going to be Gable going one-on-one with his former tag partner. And it is, same rating, 56, uh, Gable getting the win over Shelton Benjamin, 10-19, uh, with the pin there. So, um, you know, this is there's a lot, a lot more to come on the Gable storyline. I told you guys before, I had something in mind for Gable. Um, didn't expect to get to it this quickly, but because we did uh, have so much success with that first match against Owens, decided to sort of lean into it, and let's just get this thing rolling with what I had in mind for Gable. So here we go. And uh, this is sort of, I don't want to say the official start, because it kind of started with Owens, but um, we're pushing forward with Gable, even though he's not very over. Remember, Gable's not even, I don't even think he's a 50 yet on the overness. So we got a lot of work to do on that front. All right, and then it is uh, backstage. We see Edge and Randy Orton. Um, They are backstage in the hallway and 78 overall here. Edge makes it clear that coming off of Survivor Series, he's tired of the lack of respect that he's getting, and he wants to remind everyone he's the WWE champion. And that's when he says he doesn't care about Montez Ford pinning him because everyone knows the only reason that happened was because Daniel Bryan interfered And Edge says all he cares about is keeping the WWE Championship, and he deserves more respect because he is the champion. He is the person that deserves all the accolades, all the attention. Uh, This is his show. Raw is his show because he's the champion, and that he taught AJ Styles a lesson. They came in, thought they could get away with what they did to Edge when this whole thing first started, when the Bullet Club was reintroduced, and then they tried to form a pact, but Edge says he's always a step ahead, and he taught Styles a lesson at Survivor Series and that he's going to do the same to Montez Ford, and he has a lot more to say about that a little bit later on. So Edge kind of, you know, pretty much planting his flag here, making sure everyone remembers that he's the champion here, and he doesn't care if he got pinned by Ford because It was not at the expense of the WWE Championship, and uh, he'll continue that a little bit later on. But but as they're finishing, here comes Kevin Owens, and Kevin Owens walking backstage to go out, and he tells Edge, I didn't hear anything you just said, but all I want to do is make sure you know, because you and I haven't really seen each other much over the past several months, he makes it clear, you're not the best champion on Raw, I'm the best champion. And Owens says, I'm the one wrestling every single week. I'm putting out challenges every single week. And he says, I'm the champion. And he makes it clear that if Edge isn't careful, at some point, these two may meet in the ring, and Edge knows deep down that he's not a better champion than Kevin Owens. And so we've kind of kept these guys apart, as you see here. We're, we're kind of putting, putting some new storylines in place, putting some new threads, teases out there. And this is one of them. I mean, we've had these two guys as sort of the top two on the brand in terms of championships. They haven't really had any interaction, okay? So this is kind of the first time we have that here. So it gets an A2 overall. But before, uh, Hedge is not happy. So he and Orton start to sort of corner Kevin Owens. Owens is not backing down. But he gets some help in the form of Big E. So here's another guy who we really haven't put all that much any, um, you know, spotlight on with Edge at the same time. And, of course, Edge is the champion. Big E also walking backstage, and he all of a sudden kind of walks up, and he makes it clear to everyone. Um, You know, he's backing up Owens here, but he's making it clear to everyone. He hasn't lost a match on Raw since the draft. And, he had, I mean, he's not lost a single time. And Big E says, anytime I want, I'll come take that title from one of you two. And that's Big E just kind of saying, here's where I stand on that. And so Big E walks away after that. Owens kind of smirks, um, knowing that he's he accepts a good challenge. He's fine with that. Um, Edge, on the other hand, 
not very happy because as soon as he talks about not getting any respect, what happens? You get two people come in and immediately sort of disrespect him a little bit. Um, so not a happy champion right now, but we tie all these guys together because again, we got a lot of good stars on Raw. And I know sometimes, you know, we've had the Bullet Club stuff going on and we're going to continue that as a big part of the show, but we have a lot of guys that haven't even really interacted all that much yet. So we got a lot of big matches that are still out there. And I think, as you can see here, there's a group of four uh, that we can still do a lot to, with here that we haven't even touched yet, uh, basically, what, six months into the series. So that's kind of the, you know, what we planned out. We wanted to kind of keep these guys away from him, each other. And, well, here's your first little tease of maybe something to come in the future. So 82 overall, everyone excels here. So that's exactly what we want. And speaking of Owens, uh, he comes out, and uh, ignore the backstage here. He's out in the ring uh, because we know what time it is. It's Kevin Owens' U.S. Open title, op Open Challenge time here. Um, and Owens says that uh, after he beat Chad Gable at Survivor Series, he made a call. And who did he make a call to? The higher-ups at NXT. And he told them that he had something special in mind for this month in December. Something he wanted to really do because he's beaten everyone out there thus far. He's beaten everyone who stepped up to the plate. He's decided to make December NXT U.S. Title Open Challenge Month, meaning that he will take on any challengers from NXT in the month of December as he goes throughout his U.S. Title Open Challenge here. So there's a nice little twist we're going to add to the mix. And so he made sure before he came to Raw tonight that NXT higher-up sent someone to fight him because he is here for a fight, as he always is. And just like he just told Edge, he's the best champion on Raw. And he's going to prove it again tonight. Because he's ready for his opponent in the next U.S. title open challenge. And it is going to be from NXT. Who's it going to be? And it is Pete Dunne. A 76. Pretty good match here. Um, as it is, Kevin Owens defeating Pete Dunne. No, he's not Butch. He's not barking like a dog. Uh, he's not running around unleashed. Um, Kevin Owens gets the win in 1340. The pop-up powerbomb does it. It's the defense number 12 of the U.S. title for Kevin Owens. And the uh, crowd was buzzing off of this. Dunn, I think Dunn's about 50 overall. I want to say somewhere in there, maybe lower than that in NXT right now. But I kind of figured this would be a pretty good match. Just a little spotlight here on Dunn. Um, not kind of building off of it storyline-wise. But sort of just a showcase to show what Kevin – or Kevin Dunn. Oh, we, don't want, we don't want Kevin Dunn in any matches on this show. Um, Pete Dunn can do here, uh, and that's kind of what we're doing. And, and as you'll see, we've got something in mind with the whole idea of doing an NXT month with the U.S. Title Open Challenge. So uh, we will. It adds a nice little twist. Again, we've kind of been going along. This has been the theme, and now we add in another layer, a new little storyline direction we can work with. So 76, really good match here. But that's what we expect from Owens. Now he delivers more than anyone, and uh, yeah, another one here. And then backstage, uh, it is Lita, and all of a sudden, here comes Sasha Banks. And uh, Banks says she doesn't have much to say. She just wants to make it clear uh, that even though she wasn't expecting Lita, and Lita stops her right away and says, hold on a second. You said that at Survivor Series. Who were you expecting? Banks says that's not important. Um, all she knows is that she wasn't expecting Lita, but she has no problem beating her anyway. So it's kind of Banks here playing up a little bit of a tweener role um you know we've seen her kind of beat down bailey and that kind of gets her in that baby face role a little bit but now she's kind of coming back into her boss sort of you know which is kind of i guess the, the character it's kind of the tweener anyways because she can you know she's the boss and she's going to do what she wants and tell it like it is and she has no problem beating down a legend like lita uh to advance in the may young classic so that's another big first round matchup we know after it was revealed the survivor series lita uh, was indeed the mystery opponent but more to why is Banks not saying anything about who she expected her opponent to be? Perhaps we'll find out that uh, at some point. 68 overall here for this segment. And speaking of which, <laughs> so if you remember on the last Raw, we started our theme here. Bailey on vacation, uh, weekend at Bailey's. And remember, she opted not to be in the Mae Young Classic because she said everyone was an idiot for basically you know, competing in this Classic uh, knowing that the ultimate prize, she says, for the winner, remember, the winner gets to pick their own prize. Bailey said she has everything because she's the women's champion. She doesn't count Bianca Belair as a champion. She's the only women's champion uh, in this company. And she thought it was, you know, dumb for Belair to participate in this, knowing that, you know, what's her prize going to be. And so Bailey says, I'm going to take a vacation. I've earned it, uh, which when you think about it, it's kind of funny because Bailey really hasn't done anything as champion. But um, that's not in 
not intentional, I guess I could say. Um, we we kind of have a, a plan with Bailey here, but um, she was on the beach last time, and remember she was roaming. She's wearing her championship on the beach. What a tan line that is! Um, and then she saw something out of the corner of her eye that caught her attention. Uh, and now, if you want to know what that was, we continued the vignette here, and so we had to be continued on the last one. Um, Bailey sees a kid in the sand playing with a Sasha Banks action figure. So she's got her, her figures out there, and all of a sudden there's a kid with the, an action figure, and Bailey is not happy about this. She walks over, scolds this poor kid about this action figure, saying, do you see a championship belt on that Sasha Banks action figure? I don't think so, because the championship belt is right here around my waist. And uh, she, she asked the kid, hey, you want to touch the championship belt? The kid goes to touch the belt. Bailey swipes the hand away. I don't think so. And then what does she do? The ultimate heel, Bailey picks up the Sasha Banks action figure and just chucks it into the ocean, uh, just like a true heel would. So Bailey living it up on the beach, but uh, living up the character as well. And uh, she just throws this poor kid's action figure into the ocean and then just walks off. Uh, true heel work here from Bailey. And uh, to be continued, there's more to come. And I promise we're not just doing this for the, for the fun of it. All of it's going to be fun. Um, we have a, an ultimate goal in mind here, and this will, will play into something in the future uh, with what Bailey's doing on her vacation here. So, Andy overall, uh, Bailey, fantastic. Improvising with the crowd. Must be the crowd on the beach, I guess. So, And then our main event. And wow, what a main event this is. 81. I was not expecting this. I'm going to be honest with you. Um, because the Dirty Dogs and Mustafa Ali... They're not that over, but uh, clearly these three did the heavy lifting here because Big E, Cesaro, and Daniel Bryan, what a group that is. Um, that is your main event, uh, six-man tag. They get the win over Ali and the Dirty Dogs, 12-03. Bryan, the label lock does it on Robert Roode. Um, and look at this. I mean, Big E in ring performance, 82 now. Big E is just making moves. Cesaro, 75. Bryan with a 90. All these guys are at 80 or over now in our popularity, so... Not surprised probably by this overall, I guess, when you really think about it. And you got three decent workers on the other side. So um, this came together pretty well here. Um, and we're going to play in the storyline. We didn't mention it earlier, but there's a reason Sheamus is not here. You know, usually we pair Cesaro and Sheamus together. A reason Sheamus is not here, and that will be addressed on the next episode of Raw. But, uh, yeah, great main event that's really delivered. Um, you know, we didn't really build it up too much. Uh, just kind of your, you know, main event. This was the match that was booked, and this is what we went with. Didn't really need a big story behind it. Uh, but three of our biggest baby faces on Raw uh, teaming up to get the win here in this one. And then we get the highlight package. And I know this gets an 86. You're thinking, a highlight package, an 86. But we just kind of used the freestyle. We rated everyone on different things. And so when you see some of these notes, again, disregard uh, for that. But we see the highlights of the finish to the match at Survivor Series, the Raw tag team match, um, where it was. Remember, Montez Ford getting the pin. What happened to get there? It was Styles turning on, or excuse me, Edge turning on AJ Styles, hitting the spear and taking him out to get him counted out. That left Edge and Ford. Brian comes back in, knees to the face on Edge. That allows Ford to hit the frog splash. He pins the WWE champion to finish that Survivor Series match. So we really put Ford over in that one. We see the highlights of it. And then that's what brings out Edge and Randy Orton, 83 overall here. And Edge says he just saw that. He watched it on the screen. He wanted to see it again uh, because he wanted everyone to see what actually happened. Daniel Bryan is the one that cost him that match. Montez Ford did not beat him. Uh, and Edge says... There's a common theme there because just like Montez Ford did not beat me at my Survivor Series, he's not going to beat me next week for the WWE Championship because he says right now, once again, just like we did a few months ago, we are putting everyone on notice. This is our ring. We are, you know, the, the group here uh, where we are rated RKO. We are in charge. We have been since we put this together from day one. We fooled everyone. And as I said, I'm always a step ahead. So Steve Austin can put in all these limitations he wants. He will not lose his WWE Championship next week because this is still the rated RKO era. It's not the Bullet Club era. It's not the Montez Ford era. It's not the Daniel Bryan era. It's all about rated RKO, and it's all about Edge as the WWE Champion. So Edge just sort of calling a shot here uh, once again, just as he did earlier, reminding everyone he's still the, the, the target. He's still at the top of Raw, and he's going to continue to do so as the WWE Champion. And what does that do? It prompts Montez Ford, who comes out on the stage. There's no one with him. There's no Angelo Dawkins. 
There's no Daniel Bryan. As you know, we've kept them all kind of together because they've had to because of all these different brawls we've had with all the different sort of factions on this brand. But Ford comes out completely alone. It's just him by himself. And Montez Ford stands on the stage and says, I see you too. I know right now that I'm out number two to one. But he said, I came out alone for a reason. I told everyone else to stay away because I want to say to you right now, Edge, that next week I am going to achieve my dream. I pinned you at Survivor Series. My dream from the very start was to become the WWE champion. And he said, you can all go all the way back to whenever he was in that match with Bobby Lashley. Of course, this was several months ago, if you remember, in our series. And that's when we sort of had the start of this whole breakout Montez Ford. He said he wanted to prove himself. He, he did something wrong in that match when, you know, that had Lashley when Lashley was the champion. And said he's learned every step along the way. He's learned exactly what he's had to do to get to this spot. And he finally proved it at Survivor Series that he could be at the very top of WWE. And he said that was the first time. He said next time, it's going to be next week in the middle of that ring you two are standing in. Because Edge, I'm going to pin you one, two, three for the second time in two weeks. And I'm going to become the WWE champion and achieve my lifelong dream. So the ultimate babyface promo here from Montez Ford. He says he's basically calling his own shot, just like Edge did. Ford says he is going to achieve his dream next week. And he is going to pin Edge for the one, two, three. Uh, that is what he's saying. And so uh, there you go. There's our setup for the ultimate baby face here against uh, what has become the ultimate heel and edge. Um, that's your setup. And that's really all we need to go into next week's match. We, we know the history. We know everything that's led to this point. Um, and a big match next week in our main event. So 83 overall finishes the show up. And uh, we get an 82. So a nice little show here. And uh, let's see what we get to before we wrap up. All right, so that was Raw, and uh, we, excellent, we strike gold, that's what we do, and uh, let's see when he gets to, uh uh-oh, Steve Austin opinion, oh no, Mustafa Ali, Mustafa Ali doesn't connect with the fans, you probably write him off, well, congratulations Ali, you've joined Ricochet, and uh, everyone just despising you, I guess, at this point, but uh, that's that's only our first, I think, uh, comment we've had against Ali, from what I can remember, but uh, Austin, not a, not a fan of Ali, even though he's in that, he's just in that great six-man tag main event. But Stone Cold, um, trying to write him off. Maybe that'll lead to Ali interfering in next week's match, and Austin will fire him. What if we do that? What if we just throw that in? Ali's just going to get fired because he's going <laughs> to ignore what Austin said. Uh, he's going to interfere in Edge versus Montez Ford, and Ali's going to get fired. Maybe we have to put that in. All right. Uh, direct SVs. Raw gets a 3.99. I want to say that's almost – I don't think we've ever gotten a four for Raw, so that has to be one of our biggest ones thus far. Um, and then our cooling off period, remember that ends, I mean, what that ends, uh, four days. So <laughs> we're almost done with the cooling off period folks. So almost done there. Uh, but there you go. There's raw. And, um, like I said, appreciate everyone being patient as always, uh, be sure to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And, uh, yeah, we've got uh, some fun stuff on the way getting to the May Young classic. Um, and yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to try to, as I do, when I, when I get sort of some of these lulls where I can record a bunch at once, I'm going to try to do that here. Uh, that way it can sort of stay ahead, spread these out a little bit, uh, knowing that work gets a little crazy sometimes. So, um, but that, uh, was raw and on the next episode, it will be SmackDown, And then we will be basically a week away, uh, from the May Young Classic, two episodes after SmackDown. And then we will be there, uh, to get to the May Young Classic. So, uh, again, that is one you cannot miss in any way, shape, or form. Uh, you can't miss any of these episodes, but I'm telling you, the May Young Classic is going to be great. But uh, I appreciate you guys, as always. Uh, thanks for the great feedback, as usual. And uh, on the next episode, it will be SmackDown for Week 1, December.